Bellows is making a mad dash for the Titan's heart. The Collector's game is crazier than we ever imagined, and Lou seems to be trapped in her worst nightmare. Theories are coming true left and right, and I couldn't be more excited. This is my breakdown of the trailer for the Owl House series finale, watching and dreaming, combing through this promo frame by frame in an effort to piece together how everything is going to go down. And before we begin, please check out Toon Drip for some dope Owl House inspired merch, and subscribe to the roundtable with notifications on so you never miss a video. So this promo promises an epic finale that shows a little bit of the Collector's game, but really paints Bellos as the main antagonist of this finale, as expected. And because these clips are clearly all over the place, as to not give everything away, I want to break them down in the order I think they're going to happen in. Picking up from the end of For the Future, with the gang finally reaching the inside of the Titan's skull, just in time for the Collector and the Bellos possessed Rain to witness their arrival, the Collector decides that it's time to play a new game. As he snaps his fingers, the skull begins to shake violently, and not long after, Luce, Ida, and King are reunited with each other, but separated from the rest of their allies, ending up in this cosmic playpen, which sees a tearful, long-awaited reunion. But the good vibes come to a halt when the Collector casts a pink star-shaped spotlight onto the trio, descending from above as he claims he wants to show them his favorite game his silhouette looming over them, which resembles his sinister shadow form, indicating a shift from an innocent collector back to the more devious and menacing collector we met in the back half of Season 2. One game we get a glimpse of is a horrifying rendition of Pac-Man, as the collector goes full waka waka, chasing Luce down a narrow maze, and another sees Ida, Luce, and King trapped in orbs as the gigantic collector rises from above them with a huge smile on his face. The shattered orbs around him does not bode well for the game either, but it seems as if this conflict is nothing more than a mere distraction orchestrated by Bellows. As we see him, still in Rain's body, return to the Collector's bedroom with one of the Collector's blue stars in hand, remarking that this might be easier than he thought, though if you listen closely, it really sounds like some sin splicing is at play. Perhaps this will be easier than I thought. I'm curious on what this star will be used for. We've seen Collector use one of these stars for travel, and for a sec, I suspected Bellows could use this to take control of the Collector, turning them into a doll, but Collector transforms people with the little crescent moons, so it can't be that. But considering we see Amity, Gus, Willow, and Hunter all wear two different outfits in seemingly the exact same location, alongside Luce wearing the Bellows drip, I have a suspicion that this star will be used to ultimately cast Luce, King, and Ida into a fabricated world, putting their bodies into a deep slumber in the real world hence the title, Watching and Dreaming. Don't forget Dana Terrace is a Naruto fan, and a huge plot point in the latter half of the story was the infinite Tsukiyomi, a super powerful genjutsu that entranced most of the world and trapped them in their personal, perfect reality. The real Amity, Gus, Willow, and Hunter are donning their Halloween costumes, while their manifestations are wearing iconic outfits from throughout the series. Gus has his blue Grom tuts, Amity and Willow have their Season 2B outfit and hair, and Hunter has his same look from Hunting Palisman. We even see three shots stitched together of King, Luce, and Ida opening their eyes. King's paying homage to his spotlight in the first theme song, Luce opens her eyes as she's wearing Bellos' clothes, and Ida with the shadow of what looks like prison bars over her face. Instead of waking up in their perfect realities, they seem to find themselves in their worst nightmares. King seems to have returned to the Uncharted Island his dad hit him at from Echoes of the Past, though this could also be the Emperor's Castle. Luce definitely finds herself in the Emperor's Castle, and Ida wakes up behind bars in the Conformatorium which we see her fly away from later in this promo. See? Same exterior. All of these locations are significant to their arts, and all of them bring this story full circle. We get the most of Luce's nightmare here, though as not only she's seen wandering through an empty castle, her guilt over helping Bellows in the past manifesting into a scenario where she's in his position as emperor, but she stumbles upon a pit of petrified witches, including Principal Bump, Basha, Matholomew, Derwin, and Morton. I also think this snippet of a monstrous Ida and King, with glowing orange and blue eyes lunging at somebody, is also a part of Luce's nightmare world. They're likely figments attacking her. Luz's friends try to help out as they somehow find a way into this dream world, whether that be through the spell to enter minds, as seen in Understanding Willow and Hollow Mind, or through other means. Either way, they seem to briefly join the battle before being pulled out by the Collector's magic, which could mean the Collector is still working with Bellows for whatever reason after his game, or Bellows has managed to gain full control over the Collector's magic, which would be even more terrifying. 
But before they're pulled, Willow tells Luz she has to wake up. And when Luz questions how, Amity tells her to turn on the light, handing her a light lift before they're yanked back into reality. These kids aren't just twiddling their thumbs while Luz is in this nightmare realm either, as we see Gus catch Puppet Amelia in the Emperor's Castle, maybe implying Bellows is using these puppets as an army, forcing the squad to face off against them as they break the spell. We later see Gus in the same room strapped with a buttload of glyphs in his hands, and Willow holding a fire glyph with her teeth as she holds a puppet with one arm and fires a blast with her other hand. And we can see more puppets on display behind her, such as Terra Snapdragon. I wonder who they're fighting in this scene. I don't think it's Bellows himself as we see him clearly heading for something else. <laughs> There's some miscellaneous shots worth touching on. Lilith being turned back into a puppet, which I think may happen to not just her, but the squad as well, right before the collector's game. As we see the hand of what has to be Puppet Amity carving the light glyph into the floor, indicating we'll see her break free of the collector's magic, at least enough to gain consciousness. Which makes sense, given that Hootie was shown to have enough awareness in his puppet form after Lilith shed tears on him. Maybe Luz activating a light lip in her dream, like we see here, and Amity activating it in the real world at the same time, will free Luz from that dream. We also see Luz holding a picture of her, King, and Ida in front of the Owl House, which I think will happen prior to Bellus' hijacking, since we can see the Collector's decorative stars in the background. And we have Luz extending her hand in front of a portal, which we can reasonably assume is towards the end of the episode, with this moment conveying how she feels conflicted on whether or not she really wants to leave the Demon Realm for good. But I have no doubts the ending will see Luz getting access to both worlds. Again, she's got King! Portals need Titan's blood! And that courses through his veins. He can make portals with his screams, I'm calling it! Saving the best for last, we have a snippet of Bellos' endgame in this finale, and I have no doubts he's planning to possess the Titan. First off, we see a brand new shot of the Titan's heart above his throne, with Lou sitting underneath, and I'm pretty sure this will be a moment of introspection. Secondly, we see that Rain is no longer possessed by Bellos, but is being suffocated by half of his disgusting, goopy body, as Bellos himself is clearly trying to use what little energy he has left to reach his throne. Why? So he can merge with that heart and stomp out all of the aisles with his control over the Titan. Like, this is clearly the throne room. I don't know what to tell y'all. My theories are just built different. Except when they're not R.A.P. Capture the Flag theory, probably. And what even backs this up is the shot of King and Ida surrounded by these Ganon-like branches that have Bellos' blue eyes on them which is what I predicted would happen a few months ago. It implies that his essence has now consumed and spread all over the Boiling Isles. We can also tell that Rain is definitely trying to fight off Bellows, as not only is their violin on the ground, but they're clearly trying to whistle a miss of suffocation. I guess we'll find out for sure in two weeks, but for now, I'm feeling pretty confident in my theory. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. Do you think Bellos will possess the Titan? Are Luz and Ida going to be trapped in their worst nightmares? Is there anything I missed that you think might happen? Let us know in the comments down below. And keep the conversation going over on Instagram and Twitter at Austric Thoughts and at Roundtable Vids. Be sure to check out Toon Drip, and if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!